Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that I brought up the other day. Some people didn't like my stance. I want to clarify my stance on this, and that is, do non-diet sodas have any place in a healthy diet? Do they have any place as part of a fitness-oriented lifestyle? And should these things even be available to the general public? Now, a lot of people will argue, the argument being, as far as the if it fits your macros and flexible dieting crowd of a lot of us who are very athletic, we can handle much higher fructose loads. We already probably have extremely healthy diets, very balanced diets. We can work this in because we generally have free calories that we could fill with anything and get away with it. In fact, there are even situations where we would want low fiber, fast absorbing carbs. So therefore, the argument is made that in moderation, it can very easily fit into our lifestyles. Well, here's the issue that we get into there. Now, outside of it being a fast absorbing carb, there is no benefit to us to drinking this. There are tons of other fast absorbing carbs that actually have better satiety. We even sit better on your stomach without the carbonation if you need it for high energy output, particularly if you're using it for peri-workout nutrition for, say, an endurance athlete because you need extra sugar. It wouldn't even be a good choice because the carbonation will upset your stomach. You could use other carb sources more effectively, therefore, that also don't run any risk of further dehydrating you because of the total electrolyte balance of something like a soda and the fructose itself in it which is 55% of the calories roughly isn't really ideal for that peri-workout nutrition so even that argument doesn't work very well there are far far better choices and even as far as the the other things go there are simply other foods that are better options because sure we can handle more fructose but should we be loading fiber free fructose into our diets unnecessarily given that we know high fructose intake in the wrong environment could be problematic and a lot of guys who are doing flexible type dieting and if it fits your macros some of them do it very well a lot of them actually have micronutrient and fiber deficiencies in my opinion they're not eating enough for ideal health they're not really maximizing on their fiber intake micronutrient intake in some ways as much as they could be to get slightly better performance better health better longevity and so actually a lot of those who are even trying to work this in, their diets still aren't really ideal for what they're trying to do. And then the problem we get into is that, okay, maybe a few can. There are athletes who can get away with this, but I would say that for most of the people out there, including the If It Fits Your Macros, they are in the minority. The majority can't really work it in well. There would be better choices for their goals. And if they just want a fizzy, sweet-tasting drink, they could always go with diet sodas and then eat another food that they actually enjoy the taste of to get this. And people say, well, I need it just for the extra calories. It's not the best for someone who's having to eat so much that they can't get any more calories in. Why would you try to use a soda for that? Go use an orange juice or something else if you want a sugary drink to get that in because at least you'll get a little fiber with it. You won't get the extra stomach bloating if you're already so bloated from your 5,000 calorie a day whole food intake. And you'll actually get some extra vitamin C, antioxidants, and other things that might help you a bit. It's not, it wouldn't be a good choice there. It just isn't. And then it comes back to the other issue of society as a whole. Here's the problem we run into. It gives a bad message. And this is my biggest point. We have an obesity epidemic. We have a diabetes epidemic. We have all of these problems and sodas are one of the major contributing factors. You will not find a dietitian or a medical doctor who has a, a knowledge of nutrition who doesn't feel that these are a major contributing factor to both of these. It doesn't matter whether someone's in the high carb camp, the high fat camp, low carb camp, high meat diet, vegan diet, who's a, a medical professional in this field, they all agree that these liquid sodas are massive contributors to these things and even childhood obesity and childhood diabetes now. You as an athletic fitness-based person, even drinking these things actually sends the wrong message. It's sending the wrong message that it's okay for the normal person to drink these in moderation. The normal person doesn't generally understand moderation who is obese and having other health problems. And these people don't have room for these things in their diet. These will contribute to problems for these people, dietary problems, health problems, even in moderation because they don't have the calories to spare. They don't have 4,000 calorie maintenances. They don't have room for foods like that. It sends the wrong message. And in all honesty, and people don't like it when someone says this, but the world and our health 
and the health of society as a whole and even the taxes that you pay towards medical costs of people would improve if this stuff was completely pulled off the shelves and made not available. So it comes down to the question of just because a few athletes can work it into their diet doesn't mean that they should then be seen drinking it, promoting it, and promoting it as part of a healthy lifestyle when for 99% of the populace it isn't and for a very large segment of the population it is a major contributing factor to major health problems and obesity. And it is my opinion that because of that, that those of us who are athletes, we should be publicly denouncing things like this, not saying, hey, can I work a couple of these into my diet because I can get away with it due to my extremely high energy turnover as an athlete. And the answer is no, we should be standing against this because for 99% of the population, these things are potentially devastating to their health. And so therefore, accordingly, it shouldn't be seen as part of a healthier or fit lifestyle. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh.